Hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished up Sonic the Hedgehog 2. We stopped Dr. Eggman from, uh, you know, taking over the world with the Death Egg. And in this episode, Sonic and Tails have gone to Angel Island to do something. They explain in the instruction manual what they're doing here. But yeah, while we're here, uh, Knuckles, the new character who is just introduced in this game, He's tricked by Dr. Eggman into thinking that Sonic and Tails are the bad guys, and we'll see more as to why uh, Knuckles would believe Eggman a little bit later. Right now, what we're doing is we're going through the spe special stages. Uh, this game, instead of having you collect a certain amount of rings and then, you know, jumping through like a giant ring somewhere, instead they just place giant rings all around the, uh, all around the map, and you have to go ahead and find them. Or not map, but level. That's the proper terminology. So I just beat the first one. And we get our first Chaos Emerald. So just like the previous game, you gotta collect seven Chaos Emeralds and you can transform into Super Sonic. Uh, the Blue Sphere stages, which is the name of the special stages that we do, are personally my favorite uh, special stages in the entire franchise. Sonic Mania might be another contender for that, um, but I just really, really love the Blue Spheres. And I hope you love the Blue Spheres too, because we're going to be seeing a lot of them. Uh, right now, though, we're about to get to our first mid-boss, Fire Breath. You can probably guess what this guy is going to do. He just throws a bunch of bombs in the air and sets Angel Island on fire. This is actually a really cool thing to do for the first level is to just set the entire thing on fire. It's a very cool twist on the basic like first level grass world uh, archetype. I think I'm using that word correctly, I don't know. But yeah, usually in most platformers, uh, you know, the first level is a grass level, and we've gotten that in all of the Sonic games up until this point, uh, and you know, we get that in a lot of Mario games. But in this game, they start out like, with you thinking like, oh, it's just like a normal grassy area, and then bam, the entire thing's on fire. Sonic 3 does so many cool things with its levels, I cannot wait for you to see them. This game is considered like one of the greatest Sonic games of all time for a reason. Um, interestingly enough, I never actually finished Sonic 3 and Knuckles up until the Sonic Origins Plus Collection, uh, released. But, you know, now that I don't have to worry about lives and stuff like that, I can get through levels pretty easy, and with retrying special stages, it's even easier. So I just have an all-around fun time with this game. I'm pretty sure that 3 and Knuckles is my favorite game in the entire collection. Um, now you'll notice that I keep referring to this game as Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and this is a very famous piece of uh, video game trivia. Back in the day, in 1994, when they were making Sonic 3, there was some sort of promotional thing, uh, I think like McDonald's had something to do with it, where basically Sega had a specific deadline to get Sonic 3 out by a certain point, but they were only like halfway done with the game. Uh, so what they decided to do is they cut the game in half, the first half being titled Sonic 3, which released in February of 1994, and then the second half being called Sonic and Knuckles, released in October of 1994, I believe. And so, we technically got two fully finished games, although they're technically like two halves of the same game. And what they did is, instead of just having it be two separate games, and calling Sonic and Knuckles Sonic 4 or something like that, what they did is they made a specific new type of cartridge for the Sonic and Knuckles half of the game. Uh, it uses something called lock-on technology, which is something I've never seen again since the release of this game, where you can plug the Sonic 3 cartridge into the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge and get a full, complete game, the full intended experience of Sonic 3, uh, called Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Which is the coolest thing in the whole world, and it becomes even cooler when I tell you that this thing didn't just work with 
Sonic 3, it worked with all three games in the trilogy. You could plug Sonic 2 into the Sonic and Knuckles cart, and you'd get a game called Knuckles the Echidna in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is exactly what it sounds like. You get to play as Knuckles the Echidna through the Sonic 2 stages, which is just the coolest thing in the world. Um, playing as Knuckles is also something I'm gonna get to in just a sec. Uh, but you could also plug Sonic 1 into the, uh, Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, and instead of getting, like, Knuckles the Echidna in Sonic 1 or something like that, uh, you got an infinite amount of Blue Sphere stages. Like, you know, you'd beat- you'd load into something that looks just like this, and then once you beat the stage, you'll get put right into a new level, and it's seemingly infinite. I think there is a finite number of them. Uh, but it's a very huge amount where it might as well be infinite. But yeah, that's Chaos Emerald number three, I believe? I sure hope. Yeah, there we go. I forgot if I had gotten the second, or the second one or something like that. But yeah, I was just mentioning how, um... About how, about Knuckles being playable. Uh, when you start up the game, instead of being like Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, where you just immediately load into the game and you start playing, uh, you get put on a data select screen, which first of all, I must say, has incredible music. I'd highly suggest uh, going on Google, um, or YouTube, or clicking a link in the description and seeing what that, uh, or, and hearing what that music sounds like, because it is so good. But anyways, you can choose who you want to play as in, um, in Son throughout Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which is something you could only do through, like, the, uh, through, like, cheat codes and stuff like that in the original Sonic 2, I believe, unless I'm mistaken about that. I'm probably mistaken about that. But yeah, you could choose between playing as Sonic and Tails, just Sonic, just Tails, or you can play as Knuckles the Echidna. It's not just like, uh, you know, rehashing the same levels, though. It, it kind of is, but the thing is, Knuckles has an entire new campaign, an entire new story that takes place chronologically after the events of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which is so cool. It's kind of like a predecessor to, um what they would do in uh, the Sonic Adventure games. Uh, which, if you know anything about me, you know I love the Adventure games. Sonic Adventure 1 is my favorite Sonic game of all time. This whole set piece is so cool, just trying to run away from this huge airship that's dropping bombs on you. It's so rad. Anyways, this uh, segues us into the boss of Angel Island Zone, the main boss, which is... The Egg Scorcher Mark III. Yes, he's made a third Egg Scorcher model, and it's pretty cool. Uh, it's also pretty dead, but, you know... Anyways, the capsules in this game are actually, they come down from up above in the air, which I think is pretty cool. Um, you can either wait for it to come down or use tails to go ahead and open up the capsule. Hi, Knuckles! Welcome to Hydro City Zone. This level, um, or this zone rather, has such good music. It also breaks what I called in a previous episode the, uh, what did I call it, like, second zone syndrome or something like that, where, like, normally, um, at least as a kid, I always thought that the second zones of the Sonic games were really unfun, you know, Marble Zone and whatever it was in Sonic CD and, uh, Chemical Plant. Nowadays, I've come to love Chemical Plant and I'm okay with Marble Zone. But yeah, as a kid, I would always completely struggle with, you know, second zones and stuff like that and just not have a fun time, and that's when I would put down the game and just not finish it. Uh, but this game is kind of different because I absolutely love Hydro City Zone. It is fantastic. Also, uh, this, this zone's name has struck up a bit of, uh, I don't know if controversy is right. 
is the right word. A bit of a debate, I guess, as to how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, there's how I pronounced it, which is Hydro City Zone. But some people note that um, for the graphic that says Hydro City Zone Act 1, uh, Hydro and City are one single word. Which means that some people pronounce it as Hydrosity. I used to say Hydrosity when I was younger, but now I realize it's clearly supposed to be Hydro City, and if you look at the Japanese pronunciation for the zone, it's also clearly supposed to be Hydro City. Many official sources uh, have come out and said, hey, it's supposed to be Hydro City, and in, in, the, in the sound test, I believe, for... Uh, or maybe the, like the museum for Sonic Generations, this zone is spelled with a space in the middle, Hydro City. So that's how I'm going to be pronouncing it. If I accidentally say Hydrosity, forgive me for that. Anyways, we're over halfway done with the with getting the Chaos Emeralds, which is super cool. Uh, one thing that you'll immediately notice if you played uh, any of the Sonic games before this and then jump into Sonic 3 is that Sonic has a new look. He looks quite different from his original counterpart in, uh, you know, the original, in the first two Sonic games and in Sonic CD and all that stuff. Personally, I really like this look for Sonic. I don't know which one I like more um, between his duology counterpart and his, you know, three and knuckles counterpart. But I think this, you know, version of Sonic looks really cool. Ow! Crap! I don't even know how I died there, but... Ah, oh, I have to start all the way over? Okay. I don't think we have to collect the Chaos Emerald again, so we should be fine there. Recently, my videos for... Uh, some of my videos for Sonic Origins, for this Let's Play, have surpassed 100 views in just a few short days, which is super cool. I've never actually had that happen before. I've gotten some pretty high view counts, um, or at least for me. I know that, you know, if you compare me to some bigger YouTubers, it's gonna be, you know, this might not seem like it's all that much, but for me personally, this is huge because, you know, for my recent, uh, for my more recent LP, uh, Persona 3 Reload, I don't think that first episode for that has surpassed 100 views yet. Um, and my Ace Attorney 2 Let's Play, the first episode for that, it took a while to get past 100 views, which is so cool. I re I'm really glad that you guys are enjoying this series. Um, funny thing happens, uh, Episode 4 of this LP, the the one that has Metal Sonic in the thumbnail, surpassed 100 views before Part 1 did. Like, by the time Part 4 surpassed 100 views, the first part had like 80-something, I think. Which is funny. I guess either A, Part 4 was just the thing that got recommended to the most people, or B, people just saw Metal Sonic in the thumbnail and thought that would be the coolest video to click on. Either way, I am very grateful. Thank you guys all so much. So one interesting thing about the American version of the main villain of the series, Dr. Eggman, is I mentioned in a previous episode uh, how his name is, uh, in the US, was Dr. Evo Robotnik. And uh, that might confuse some of you uh, somewhat because in some sources, uh, Robotnik's first name is pronounced as Ivo, instead of Evo. Like, for example, in the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, I do believe he pronounces it, I, uh, Eggman pronounces it as Ivo Robotnik. But I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be pronounced Evo. Some people have, pr have pointed out that Evo sounds very similar to Evil, um, which I think is funny, so I'm going with that pronunciation. But yeah, that's Act 1 of Hydro City Zone done. I feel like I'm going to slip up at some point and accidentally say Hydrosity. Oh, this song is so good. And if I remember correctly, they made a really good uh, remix for it in uh, Sonic Mania. Did I get all of the Chaos Emeralds? If not, I'll just need to grab all of the Chaos Emeralds in this level. One thing that I recently discovered about myself is that I accidentally mispronounce the words, or I accidentally mix up the words, uh, comics and comments. Like, 
I never realized I had this problem until this LP, where I keep accidentally, like, I'll say, be sure to say something in the comments, and then my mouth will just say comics for some reason, and then I'll pronounce, and then I'll say, oh, it, this thing happened in the Archie comics, but then my mouth will say com, the Archie comments, and it's like, that doesn't make any sense, brain, why do you keep doing that? So with Sonic Origins, I know there were a lot of complaints about this collection of, um, this collection of the games when it first came out. And I'm not gonna, like, try to downplay anyone's criticisms or anything like that, you know. But I personally didn't have too much of a problem with this collection. One thing that did kind of weird me out, though, was the weird pricing plan. There were, like, different versions of Sonic Origins where... Like, if you buy one specific version, I'll throw up like the price, the I'll throw up the pricing plan on screen because it's really weird. But like, some versions of Sonic Origins just didn't have everything in them, and they were missing certain things or had things that other versions didn't have. And then there was like the big mega deluxe version that had everything in it, which I think is the one I bought. I for I forget. But yeah, it, that is a very strange thing. I don't know why this game had to be so confusing with its pricing plans, like... And some of the stuff was really weird, like, I get, like, having some bonus content, but there's, like, having animations on the game select screen. I only have five emeralds? Weird. Normally I'd have all seven emeralds at this point. That's very strange. I must have just not I must have just not been thinking and passed by some of the some of the rings. Give me a moment. All right, I looked up where the next uh, giant ring location is and it's like not too hard to get to, so no need to worry about it. Also, you can't fly underwater with tails for obvious reasons. I do think his swimming animation is very adorable though. One thing that I want to jump in uh, real quickly and say is that in a previous uh, video, in a Persona video actually, uh, I talked about how like I slowly my like views on video essays had like deteriorated or not deteriorated, but I had more of a negative opinion on video essays um, just because my thought process at the time was that a lot of the video essays that I had seen recently. They were mostly just recapping what happened in the show, or the game, or the, you know, whatever piece of media it is. And I don't have a problem with recaps themselves, but with video essays, I guess I was just... I expected them to be a bit more... ouch. I was gonna try to jump off of those spikes, but it didn't work out. I don't know, I, I expected them to be a bit more additive on the side of the creator. But I've lightened up on video essays recently because, you know, I guess I just, I hadn't seen the right ones, I guess is the best way to describe it. Whoops, I'm supposed to go a bit higher than that. After I started to watch a few more video essays and I started seeing ones made by people who, you know, could talk about things in a very interesting way and, you know, added on a bit to the conversation a bit more than, you know, I had seen. You know, I lightened up on, vi on video essays a lot more. Alright, here's that other uh, secret ring that I was looking for. This will be number six, and then I'll have to get number seven in the next zone. One thing I will say about video essays, though, is that I've realized that there is one part in, the vid in video essays that I always see, um, and in my head I just refer to it as the part. Um, this happens in every single video essay I've ever seen about, um, whenever people, like, gush about something that they absolutely love. They will always say, and you'll always hear this sentence, pretty much. It might be slightly- Whoops. It might- there might be a slight variation, but it's always something along the lines of this. This thing is pretty cool, but that doesn't mean it's perfect, and then they start to list a bunch of flaws. That sentence irks the shit out of me. Not not on principle. N not on the principle of that sentence. 
like the principle of it, I get what you're going for when you say that. But whenever I see it in video essays, it always like breaks the pacing. I always enjoy so much more um, people talking about stuff that they love um, rather than things they uh, dislike. Like, I would rather listen to someone gush for 10 hours about how they love a video game rather than rant for 10 hours about they hate a video game and stuff like that. And that's not necessarily... And that's not necessarily universal. There are some videos uh, made by people who rant about topics that I am very passionate about. But yeah, in general, I like to see more positive videos. And so there will be sections of a video where it's just someone talking about like, Oh, I love this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. And I'm like, hell yeah. And it's like really cool to see them talk about like, Oh, I love this thing so much. And then like after you get done talking about like, Oh, this thing is so cool. Then the video has to stop and be like, Oh wait, remember, this is a piece of media. That means it has faults. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I have a functioning brain. I know that things have faults in them. I know that that's how things work. I know that nothing can really be perfect. I don't know, it's just... I know that's something that's, that probably only really irks me. And again, I get why people do it. But, I don't know. In a, vis in a video essay, I'd rather just listen to someone, like, unapologetically, like, gush about something for hours. And that doesn't mean I'm saying we need to stop talking about things having flaws before someone, like, takes my words out of context or anything like that. I'm... Perfectly, uh, I, again, I'm perfectly okay with discussing flaws in media and stuff like that. Because even though I make fun of the phrase, yes, it's like not everything is perfect. It's important to discuss flaws. Anyways, Marble Garden Zone. This is something that irks me about uh, the Sonic Origins collection is that uh, in the original game, at the start of the level, you'd roll down that hill and then you'd roll right into this area over here and get the shield. But in Origins, you just smack into a wall and that sucks. But anyways, to kind of go ahead and finish up my rant. Yes, talking about flaws and things is important. I'm not, like, trying to discourage you from talking about flaws. But I don't know. I'd just love to see more video essays unapologetically gushing. A lot of the time, a lot of the time uh, from various different people, this isn't me singling anyone out. A lot of it is done in the name of quote-unquote objective analysis, but a lot of the time when I see people say objective analysis, it's just their opinions, but they want to seem real smart and like they have authority, so they just say objective. This gets into a whole rant where, and I've talked about this so many times in the past, how I hate how people misuse the term objective to just mean my opinion that I think is better than yours. But I don't know, I, I don't have time to get into that whole rant, and I've already mentioned that th that whole thing in many different videos before. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, end off the video here. I've been going for like half an hour now, and... Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and start up Marble Garden Zone and hopefully get Supersonic. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.